Hello and welcome to today's Delta Credit Tip. So a question that I'm asked quite frequently is, what is a good credit score? 580, 720, 850, what is really a good score? Well stay tuned, we're gonna fill you in on just how you can analyze your score right here on today's Delta Credit Tip. Hello and welcome back to today's Delta Credit Tip. So we're often asked, what is a good credit score? 580, 680, 780, 800, what is a good credit score? So today we're gonna to talk about that score and what that means to you and what really is considered a good credit score. And hopefully you'll find this information helpful. If so, give us that thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the button so that every Thursday, as we come out with new information on you and your credit restoration process, you get it right out of the gate, right? And most importantly, if you know someone who's curious about their credit scores or they're trying to build their credit or work on their credit, share this information with them, right? That's the whole point of us being on YouTube is so that we can get this information out to you free of charge, right? So that you can learn how to do what you got to do. All right. So let's talk about that credit score. So the thing about your credit score, is first off, let's preface this by saying that if you've listened to any of our videos, you'll remember that for us, we really don't care about your credit score, right? We care about the behaviors that lead to the score, but that score is a benchmark, but recognize there are 64 versions of your credit score, depending on what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to get a car, whether you're trying to get a house, whether you're trying to get insurance, whether you're trying to get an apartment, I mean, all of these different industries have not only their own bureaus that cater to them, but their own scores that cater to them. Okay, so the score is gonna be a bit convoluted in and of itself, but if you want some general ideas as to what those scores need to be, we're gonna go into it right now. So really, again, it's about what your goal is, because each goal is gonna have a different score requirement. So let's start with cars, okay? The thing about a car is, is the rate that you're gonna get as a result of your score isn't really based on your score. It's based on the profitability, okay? So what we always tell our clients is that if your score is between 650 and 700, 699, let's say, then you should be going to your bank to get your financing. If you are going to go, if your scores are above 700 or below 650, you're gonna to wanna to go to the dealership to get the financing. Why is that? Well, let's start with the bank. The bank makes money on your loan, okay? The dealership makes money on the loan, the warranty, the car, right? And anything else they can throw in there. So they have more opportunity to make money. So as your score starts to uh, surpass 700, right? What's gonna happen is, is that the dealership's gonna go to a 0% interest rate, but the bank, they're only making money on the loan unless you're buying a repo from them, right? So really, they're not gonna be able to compete at a 0% interest rate because there's no profit in them. And they're not gonna give you a 0% interest loan because there's no, there's, this is a bad business model, right? Lending money out for free. So as you go above 700, you're gonna to wanna to go to the dealership and get the 0% financing and you know, then finagle down the cost of the vehicle. Okay. Now, if your scores are below 650, the bank's going to tap out there too because, you know, they don't want to be in the business of owning cars. So they're going to tap out once you go below 650 as well. Okay. So really for a car loan for financing at a bank, 650 to 700. Over 700, below 650, go to the dealership. All right. So now let's shift on over to a uh, business loan, okay? So if you're trying to get credit for your business, the loan product that you use will determine what your score needs to be. If you're using conventional underwriting directly from the bank itself, in other words, you're not using SBA or anything like that, then that's gonna be very specific to that bank, right? But count on at least having a 680 for that, uh, business line of credit, business credit cards, maybe not so much because they're credit cards and they're still Visa, MasterCard, whatever. But when you start talking about 
an unsecured loan or an unsecured line of credit or even equipment credit, then you're going to want to start looking at um, that 680 or higher. Okay. Now, when you start talking about SBA loans, well, that gets to be a little bit different, right? SBA has their own requirements because that's a government entity that's backing these loans uh, that is underwritten by the bank. So they're going to have certain criteria as far as a minimum credit score. Now, there are different types of SBA products. The, one of the most popular um, is the SBA 7A, right? That one's going to have a minimum credit score requirement of around, I'd say, 640, right? Um, the, uh, the, the next product that's really popular, uh, with, um, SBA is going to be their micro loans. Their micro loans are going to be between 620 and 640. That's probably the lowest end that you're going to find, uh, through SBA, uh, all the rest of their products, their 504s, uh, their export, their cap lines. Those are all going to be like 660, 680 or higher, right? But the, the 7A and the express loans are probably the most popular loans. Uh, and the other criteria is a lot easier. You don't have to worry about necessarily time in business and you know other criteria that you may not meet. Uh, the best thing to do is talk with an SBA approved lender uh, and start talking about what those guidelines are because really on even on a, a on a business loan, there's so many other factors that are involved. That score is just one very small piece of what needs to happen. Not to mention if you're using SBA, that's going to extend to everyone that's ownership that owns that business. Uh, inclusive of anybody with 20% or more and up to at least 80% representation on the loan application. So if you've got two or three business partners, recognize that their scores are going to have to mirror the same criteria uh, that those loan products are going to require. Okay. So now let's go to the most popular one and that being your mortgage. So with the mortgage, there's FHA, VA, USDA, conventional, and jumbos, okay? Now, each one of these loans for each lender is going to have a different score requirement. If you're looking at jumbo loans where you're talking big, big, big mortgages, right? Those are gonna probably be, you know, you're gonna wanna go in the 700s for that, right? They've got things like physician's loans that are typically jumbo loans that you can get maybe at a 690, but you, they're gonna require a huge down payment, uh, which is not conducive to us paying off the loan as we've shown in other videos, okay? So you want that score to be about a 720 uh, for those jumbo loans so that you get the best rate because a lot of times they'll even eliminate your down payment or eliminate student loan debts or something along those lines that that higher score requirement is going to make that loan uh, process much, much easier, okay? So now if you're talking about an FHA loan, FHAs, they go all the way down to about a 580, right? Now it'll be pulling teeth and giving your next kin, you know, next of kin uh, collateral sometimes to get it done, but you can get approved with an FHA loan with a score sometimes even lower than a 580, but I wouldn't count on it going through. Now, if you're combining that with something like a down payment assistance program, then you're going to be jumping up to about a 640, right? So 640 is what a good credit score is for someone going for an FHA. If you're doing VA or if you're doing uh, conventional or if you're doing um, uh, USDA, okay, then you're really going to want to be at around 620 to a 640 uh, to just get in the gate. Uh, but the, of course, the higher the score, the better, but that's the minimum score requirements that you're going to need to get in those. Now, if you're trying to go for a second mortgage or home equity line of credit, those credit score requirements are going to be a little bit higher only because they're in a second lien position. Right. So if you default, then the first lien holder, the first mortgage is going to get like, let's say they foreclose on you and they sell the house. Well, the proceeds are going to go to the first mortgage first and then the second mortgage second. So they run a higher risk because they may not get paid even if they sell the house, if they foreclose on the house, if there's not enough equity in it. So that one's going to have a little higher of a requirement. So if you've noticed through all the different examples that we gave, there are two things that seem to be prominent, right? The goal of what the, what the loan is for and the collateral type, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind that the, the smaller the collateral, the larger the risk, so therefore the higher the requirement. Uh, so that's why the mortgage is so much easier to get a good rate on than the car, 
right? Is because they got you for 30 years, right? And as we've learned in other videos, it's interest that what matters isn't the interest, but the time the interest has to accumulate. Not to mention it's a house. I can't, I can walk away from a house, but it's much easier to walk away from a car. Okay. So my suggestion is before you go get any loan, before you apply for any loan, you need to talk to the lender. Whenever we get a client in, the first thing that we do after our initial consult is we reach out to a lender that is going to provide them potentially with the loan that they seek. And we're going to have this candid conversation about what their guidelines are so that as I start to look at their credit profile and all the different matrix things that make up their financial portfolio, like their debt to income, their debt to credit, their credit scores and all that, that we know exactly what the expectation is from the lender. So if you just simply ask them, what is the minimum credit score requirement? That, that's good credit right? Because it doesn't matter what you think of your credit score. It matters what the lender thinks of your credit score. So I hope this information helps. So again, give us that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that every Thursday, as we come out with more information, you get it right out of the gate. And hopefully this information will help you make a choice, make a change, Delta.